Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing another edition of Spotlight on Petite Palettes. If you're new to my channel, this is a series where I really wanted to focus on doing kind of one or a couple of looks with smaller palettes in my collection. And the way I typically tend to do this is like a try to get ready with me kind of style as I like work with the palette and talk about its pros and cons, which is why I'm looking a little bit blank. The rest of my face is done except for my eyeshadow. And today I actually have two brand new palettes. I literally picked them up yesterday. The first time I ever went to a mall since February of 2020, I went. I This past weekend, I was actually on vacation with my boyfriend for our anniversary, and we decided to actually go out and like do something. So we went to a mall, and there was a Sephora, and there was a Lush, and everyone was being very careful. Everyone had masks on. There was sanitizer everywhere. They were only letting a certain number of people into the stores. They were very careful, and my boyfriend, he was just like, you, you should splurge. You know, he bought me a few things. I bought me a few things, and it was just really nice to just kind of relax. And... When I went to Sephora, I ended up splurging on, finally, some eyeshadows from Charlotte Tilbury. I got two of her quads. Charlotte Tilbury has been a brand where, like, I never really knew if the shadows were, like, worth the hype. So, along the lines of, like, Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona. Like, I have Natasha Denona palettes I love, but I don't think they're worth, like, that price point, essentially. And the only Pat McGrath palette I've tried has been like a limited edition holiday release. So like, quite honestly, I don't know if that's indicative of her overall formula. And to be really honest, when I went to Sephora, I kind of really wanted to buy the new Pat McGrath holiday palette. But the Sephora I went to did not have a Pat McGrath section. So I, I couldn't buy, <laughs> I couldn't buy it. So because of that, and because I kind of wanted to splurge, I went over to the Charlotte Tilbury section. In the Charlotte Tilbury section, there was actually a representative from Charlotte Tilbury there working. And I was like, oh, perfect. So I worked with him. He was so nice and I had helped to pick up two of the palettes. So the first, ooh, dropped it. Watch me just break this entire quad like before I even try it. <laughs> so the first quad that I picked up is the Rebel and this is because I told him, I asked him for help picking out some quads and I said I like grungy tones, I like darker tones, and this is the first thing he popped up and I believe this is one that's been on my radar for a bit but I never picked up. It's just beautiful grungy green palette which is just right up my alley if you know me. The other palette I picked up I believe is brand new for fall 2020 and this is called the walk of no shame and like my boyfriend said this looks like a pumpkin spice palette which I am all over and I am all for a good pumpkin spice palette so for this video I kind of want to try the walk of no shame since this is kind of brand new just want to play with it and I'll save this grungy palette if you guys like this video I'll do this in another video or I'll save it for like a try to get ready with me or something um, but I just I'm really excited to like finally pick up some shadows and just to see what if any of the hype is about so we're going to use this one the walk of no shame and i'm just going to do a really quick kind of simple eye look using the tips that i got from the charlotte tilbury consultant essentially he said these palettes were made to be like a rotary phone so you essentially use the shades like this so this is your base this is your crease this is your smoke this is your pop on the lid and he said um apply the first three shades with a brush and then the last shade is supposed to be a pop of color that you use with your finger so i'm going to follow those directions directions and actually see if I get a nice look out of this little quad. So yeah, so I've already done my full face. I did my eyebrows and I primed my eyelids. Technically, from what the Charlotte Tilbury consultant told me, I don't know how much I believe this, but he said that each of these shadows from Charlotte Tilbury already has primer in, so you technically don't need to use an eye primer. I've only found approximately one shadow. <laughs> And it's a liquid shadow that I can use with no primer on my heavily hooded lids and that stays all day. And those are the Natasha Denona um, Metropolis, not Metropolis, the Natasha Denona, um, I'm having a brain fart, the, put it on the screen, editing Monica, thank you, but her liquid shadow. So those I can actually wear like on blank face, no primer, and they look beautiful and they last all day. Those are the only shadows I found. So I don't know how much I believe the primer, whatever. But um, I am going to use the first shade just to pat all over the primer that I already have down. And then I'm going to go in with this beautiful kind of pumpkin-y, warm, ooh, pretty shade as <laughs> my transition. Now I will say I believe each one of these shades has some shimmer to it, except for the darkest kind of mauve shade here. It seems to be the only one that looks relatively matte. And I do like that... It doesn't seem like Charlotte Tilbury is very concerned about following like the always use mattes in your crease rule. Mm. 
Okay, and I'm thinking I probably like when I I didn't know how well it would have worked But I'm thinking next time I use this palette I like to prime with either an eye primer or with a concealer and I pat it with um, I set it with a face powder So I'm thinking next time I try this palette I'll probably prime and then just set it with this first shade because it does Look really nice and honestly if you're going for a no makeup makeup look you could probably just put this shade on and do mascara and be fine but I'm excited to finally get into this pumpkin-y shade. So I'm going to take that same brush. And let's go in. So it's not, honestly, not as pigmented as I thought it would be. But I'm going to do the same on the other side. And we'll see. So I have to say, this eye definitely turned out a little bit better, and I think it's because I didn't tap off any excess, I just went in. But because I'm not tapping off the excess, I am getting a little bit of fallout down here. So. But I am liking the color payoff when I don't tap off the excess, so I'm just going to have to deal with the fallout and build that up. Okay, the fallout brushed off quite easily, which is very nice. And I'm gonna take a different brush. This time I'm gonna go in with a Morphe M433 and I'm gonna take the darkest berry wine Merlot shade and start building this up here on the outer third. Wow, that shade has almost no pigment okay I'll try, 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 try. build it up okay really not impressed with this shade wow it really doesn't I mean it's got a nice tone to it but uh, it's definitely the weakest performing shade so far uh, but we're just gonna try it and do the same on this side and hopefully the look will come together <laughs> Ooh, more fallout. It seems to be a very fallout heavy formula. Okay, I've realized so the best way to do this is like literally to load up your brush and like pat in the color and then blend out the edges because other than that you're just going to end up with like a very very light wisp of color and you're going to end up with a lot of fallout. So again, going in with my dual fiber brush just to brush that away. Alright, so those are the first three shades. So far not super impressed especially with that third shade i was really excited for like that warm dark shade to just come in and like pull together everything and blow me out of the water but okay so next i'm gonna go in like the instructor said with my finger for this last shade and they said i don't need any primer so i'm not gonna use a primer i'm gonna go right in let's see hmm Okay, we'll just keep going and go one more time. Okay, not impressed <laughs> so far, unfortunately. Uh, it feels really dry. Like whenever I go into a nice like shimmer shade, I expect to have it have like a little bit of a not as dry and gritty texture because this, it's like barely showing up on my lids. Can you guys see that? This is supposed to be the pop shade. Uh, oh no! <laughs> I was hoping this was gonna be a good like spotlight on petite palettes in a palette. Oh wow, I am just constantly putting this on over and over and I'm not seeing anything on my lid. That is a shame. Okay. Honestly, I think I need to try this with a glitter glue and their whole like primer in the shadow thing is probably just BS. So let me, is, is trying to save this look, let me just grab a glitter glue and actually try to put this on on top of it and just see what happens. So, okay, with the glitter glue, it definitely looks better on my lid. But it still doesn't look like great. Like I've got drugstore formulas that look better without glitter glue than this, but I'm, I'm gonna do the other side just to match. All right, 
lids definitely look better with the glitter glue. For my lower lash line, I'm just gonna keep it simple and use the darkest shade on the outer third and then blend it out with the second darkest shade on a tiny little blending brush. Okay, so I am not really happy so far. I finished the look. The look by itself, if I looked at it in a vacuum, it's okay. It's not the best, it's not the worst. But the amount of work it took to get here and the fact that I am now seeing that the fallout did stain. I've got like circles of like shadow under my face and I'm gonna try and like pat on a loose powder to like brush that away but like out of something as expensive as a 52 54 dollar quad i expect so much more especially uh, i mean mm. also this is like the driest formula i think i've ever tried in an eyeshadow uh, oh no while i let this bake set in order to try and save my under eyes i'm going to finish off the look with a little bit of brown eyeliner from my waterline and this pixie mascara so here we are with the finished look Man, and I sound exhausted because I am. <laughs> Overall, now that the look is like pulled together, it doesn't look terrible. Like I would go outside like this. I would have definitely done my eyes before my face makeup if I had known how badly this was gonna like fall out and stain. But it's not what I'm expecting out of a $54 quad, you know? You know, honestly, if you had given me this without the packaging, I would have thought this was a failed wet and wild holiday release. <laughs> Yikes. So this is my first time using this palette. So I'm gonna try it some more and see if I can get it to work in a better way than this. And uh, man, I just, I was expecting so much more, you know? But then again, I, I just know that this is like the newest quad. I don't know if this is permanent. So this might be a limited edition and it might be blah, blah, blah. The other one, the Rebel palette that I got, the green one, this is permanent. This is part of their permanent collection. So maybe I really just need to test this one out and base my judgment on the shadows off of this and not their newest quad. So let me know down below if you want to see a Spotlight on Petite palettes with the Rebel quad instead. And if you've ever tried Charlotte Tilbury shadows and just what you think of them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.